Hi everybody, making a new video here. It's been a while since I've made some new videos. So, in this video I'm going to be explaining how to put together a poison build that you can run to grind Torment 3, which, I mean, people have tested this, I've tested this myself, and I think most people after enough grinding have come to more or less the same conclusion, whether they read it somewhere or they found it through experience, that Torment 3 is more or less the best torment to be farming Rifts for for legendaries, to get the best drop rate. So I've got it set to Torment 3. This build can run on Torment 5 very quickly, and it can do 6, but 6 is still always going to be really a challenge. I mean, no matter what kind of a build that you have, it, you're still a glass cannon. So even if you've got damage to just run them over, there are still several ways that you can get yourself killed that will just frustrate you and make you upset. And that just takes practice, basically. Getting your, your spirit walks you know, out at right times and just positioning yourself in smart positions so that you're not extremely vulnerable. Like going into a corner when backing yourself into a corner when your spirit walk or if you have horrify equipped when both of those abilities are down especially spirit walk going into a corner when that is down is always a death trap so there are certain things you can do just in general you know smart survival tips that you can do to keep yourself alive and if you obey these simple rules and apply them to more or less any build or spec that you're running you'll do very well so for this I'm running spirit walk piranhas Acid Cloud, Locust Swarm, Haunt, Spider Queens. Main three damage spells on this are going to be Spider Queens, Locust Swarm, Acid Cloud. Piranhas does do poison damage, but it's not really a, a big damage spell. It's really for the damage add and to a, a knock them up in the air, which applies them a knock up and a knock back, which open it uses your strong arm bracers. Enemies hit by knockbacks suffer 25% more damage for five seconds when they land. So two runes you can use with your piranhas that will apply this knockback that are really viable. Paranado or Wave of Mutilation. I find Wave of Mutilation works best with this kind of a build. Paranado I find works better with like a Jade build because you want to pull them into you with a Jade build so you can hit them with the Soul Harvest and nuke them. With this build, you want to push them back and keep them farther away because you've got the range. But if they get close enough or if you can just run right up to them, that's when you can use your Spear, your Locust Swarm and you know, they might have a trail of guys and you know, you're just sitting there killing them and killing them and then one guy just gets a little bit too close, you hit him with the Locust Swarm and that will travel all the way to the back and it'll just get them all and then they'll all start and then the line will just get shorter, <laughs> basically. So uh, I've got Poison Spells here and this is a very high damage area effect spell that you can spam very very much if, if you've got a decent amount of mana and good enough mana regeneration which I will explain there's plenty of it with this build. Uh, Locust Swarm again too is a very very high mana cost build but it does not drain your mana because you will have plenty of mana regeneration with this build and by the time you get to the point of your rotation that you're you're casting Locust Swarm <coughs> you won't even see your mana move when you cast it so uh, you've got Haunt, which is actually used for mainly the mana regeneration. It is actually quite a high damage spell, even if you don't have poison damage spec in it. It is a cold damage spell, but it still does a lot of damage over time, and it will jump from character to character, you know, like that. Uh, and it is what basically runs and funnels and channels your mana regeneration. Uh, spider Queens here. I'm using Spider Queens because with this Grin Reaper, Every time you throw a Spider Queen, see I'm throwing it, and then my clones come out, and each one of those is a unique dude, and they're gonna throw their own Spider Queen, and then they disappear. But that Spider Queen stays up for the full duration, for the full 15 seconds, and runs around dealing its damage and eating stuff. So then they disappear, but you keep on attacking. You're attacking while you're, every time you're casting and running your rotation, you know, you have a chance to all of a sudden trigger your clones, and boop, and two more pop out. They throw a couple spider queens and then they disappear. And then, okay, oh, keep on casting and then boop, a couple more pop out. Come on, pop out, pop out, pop out. There they go. And then two more pop out. They throw them. And, you know, this casted, you know, with other spells as well, spamming other spells, 
will get your guys out almost all the time. There's so many things that will chain react with this build and you'll be attacking so fast that your guys are going to keep popping out and you will have an army of spider queens just dealing massive poison damage. And it costs you absolutely no mana. It is a signature spell. So when you are out of mana or when you're getting halfway through your rotation, this is what you're going to be switching to. So you'll be lobbing them out, you know, getting that army of them out. It costs you absolutely no mana, and your mana will regenerate super fast. Now, how does the mana regenerate super fast? Rush of Essence is the only thing. You've got Rush of Essence and Haunt. Haunt is only 50 mana, and I mean, I'm pretty sure standard default mana regeneration with nothing on gives you an extra boost is 50 mana per second. So, you know. Haunt cast so one, every one second you can cast Haunt, but with Rush of Essence, I don't know if some people really understand this, or if they've read it, or if they understand exactly how this works, but I didn't at first, but I do now. Spirit spells return 100 mana over 10 seconds. That's great. And it does not mention, but that stacks. It stacks as many times as you can get it to attack, as many times as you can get it, the faster you attack, the faster you can cast, the more man, the more spells you can cast in 10 seconds. The more times you can cast Haunt in 10 seconds, the higher you can get your mana regeneration up to by 10 mana per second for that 10 seconds. So you'll see it here, my mana, I have nothing really with mana regeneration even on it. My mana regeneration per second is 64 and a half. Something's got a little extra boost to some mana regeneration, but that's actually pretty bad. That's actually pretty bad. But as soon as we start casting Haunt, it goes up to 74, 84, 94, 104, and you know, you've got a pretty fast attacking sword, or I've got a Thunder Fury equipped right there, and the faster your attack speed, the higher that cap will reach. So I'm, t I'm capping at it at about 220, and 24 mana regeneration per second so when I'm getting like maybe you know a third you know halfway through my rotation I've been casting enough spells and spamming haunt enough that my mana regeneration is pretty much up here it'll start to degenerate at you know 10 per second but that's still that is massive mana regeneration and you're still going to be slowly cycling you know another one in another one in and just it'll keep all these dudes popping in. So that's where your mana regeneration regeneration is going to come from. Is from spamming haunt, and then switching to spider queens to get your spider queens out. And then while you're doing that, that you're not can't, you're not using any mana, and that's your mana regeneration it just fills right up. So I will empty all of my mana, all of my mana, burn it all the way down. See, mana regeneration sucks. But, here's how a rotation would normally start. At first you come up and you just cast Haunt. And then you hit him with the, hit him with the, pair, the, the wave and you knock him back. Ah, you hit him with the wave, alright? And then, you start casting, you know, maybe you hit him with Pestilence. Alright, you cast Pestilence. Ah, and then you start spamming your Acid Cloud. Okay, and then, you know, okay, you've got, you've got your Haunts going, Haunts going, Haunts going. Make sure you're, there's going to be more than there's going to be mobs everywhere, so you're going to have to be haunting everything, and then switch to your spider queens, and now you can spam haunt. And when you're in your rotation, I'll show you when it's in action. When you're in your rotation, you can literally hold down acid cloud, and you can get about 20 acid clouds out before your mana actually gets back and goes down and out again. The regeneration is just crazy. You see, it? it's barely moving, and and I've got 1% mana cost reduction, but I'm also using Pierce of Veil. So 10% mana cost reduction from Blood Ritual. Mana regeneration from Blood Essence. Spirit Walk, and if you were to swap out one of these, if you were to say put Horrify here, you know, it would give you some extra utility for Fear and Root, extra armor and stuff like that. If uh, you're finding you're dying a lot, you know, you'll lose some damage you know, you won't cast Haunt and everything like that, but it would, you know, it would give you extra utility, and uh, and it would also regenerate, it's a spirit spell, it would also apply. So you have Spirit Walk, Haunt, and Horrify would all count as spirit spells and give you that 10 mana regeneration every time that you pop them. So you can even swap that out if, uh, if you know, 
Maybe you're, it's not damage that you need, maybe it's a little more utility that you need, or a little more defense, so you could use Horrify with that as well. Uh, creeping Death Passive, uh, that you, I, is necessary. You want all of these things to stick. You want your damage amplifier to stay permanently. You want uh, Locust Swarm to stay on them and Haunt to stay on them permanently. And as long as those things are on them permanently, that's enough to kill trash as it is. Okay, but you want to kill this stuff fast. So that's where the mana regeneration and then the holding and then the, the army of spider queens and the spamming of haunt, that's what you, you know, you, you spam those and you, you pile that on and that's what takes down the elite packs and just melts them in seconds. Uh, runes here for haunt, you've got a few choices. I mean, like you can go with life on, this will give you a little survivability. You know, this is, if you don't have to worry about survivability, if you don't have to worry about mana, if you don't have to worry about snaring them or slowing them down, if you know none of these things are really being that much of a problem for you, Resentful Spirits. Good, obviously. Uh, Lingering Spirit is the only one that's really not useful with this build. <laughs> so, um, yeah, slow the movement of their, you can slow them, you can... You can add it if you really want, if you find mana regeneration is still kind of a bit of an issue, maybe you don't have enough mana regen, uh, resource cost reduction, so you're going through your mana faster, you can throw on Draining Spirit as well. <clears throat> and while you're casting your haunt, you're tapping them, you're getting an extra 12 mana per second, 12 mana per second, 12 mana per second. Every dude that you have a haunt on, each one of those haunts is giving you an extra 12 mana regeneration per second on top of your stacking 10 regeneration per every time you cast haunt. So you've got an endless funnel of, of mana, but with enough resource cost reduction, it's just not necessary, and it's in fact better too, because it's better to have a resource cost reduction and have the spell cost that much less mana than to run out of mana, you know, that much faster and then have to wait for it to regenerate before you can cast it again. It's better to not run out of mana than to just run out but have ma fast mana regeneration. So resource cost reduction combined with a lot of mana regeneration is what makes this really, really effective. And area effect damage and just a total shitstorm of everything. It's great. So th that's the explanation of the spells, really, and the haunt. You want uh, corpse spiders with spider queens, spirit walk. I prefer jaunt. It's probably one of the least favorite runes, but I prefer jaunt. You could go with the, uh, you know, extra mana. And if you really mana, you want mana, 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 mana. You can go honored guest if uh, you want to do some healing. No, not probably a smart choice. It's probably a smart choice most times to go with healing journey. Uh, but uh, if you know if you're just rick rolling them and you're not really get taking much damage at all and you don't really need to heal and you just want one extra second, so fine. I want one more second. So one more second of invulnerability instead of two. So I use jaunt because I would rather have one more second of invulnerability than heal myself for 14% damage when I'm pretty much already at full health and I just don't want to get hit by that fucking cold snap. So I go with three seconds and uh, emulation, acid clouds. Um, with, th with this, you can go with slow burn and it will do more damage if they're standing directly in where you have casted it. But the problem is, is that they move or they die and then there's nothing left there to take any damage. So you go to lob blobs and basically the initial hit is gonna do a good amount of damage and then lob blobs they turn into them little blobs and those things run around and they hit st stuff for 600% weapon damage over 5 seconds. They'll poison nearby enemies. Anything that they touch, they'll poison for that much damage. So, and they move around. Just like if you've ever had the elite packs cast that stuff at your feet and it spreads all out. You know, like if one of those things hits you, it dots, they can, you can be dotted multiple times. <laughs> or one of those things can dot multiple targets as long as it touches them. So it, it'll touch them, and when if, it, if they die, it'll move out, it'll find out another target. It's like a heat-seeking little blob slime. So, you know, it kills it, and then it moves on to the next thing. So, you know, none of the damage really gets wasted if the target dies, or if you kind of miss the target. You could miss the target completely, and those things will still go and find something to deal damage to, hopefully before they, they disappear. So Lob Blobs is really, I think, the best choice to choose with this. Um, and then 
what else did I leave anything out? And then pestilence. I mean, pestilence is the only... I, I, I call locust swarm pestilence because I consider pestilence the only rune worth actually using with this spell because it is such a high-cost mana spell that you do not want to have to one cast and it just spreads like wildfire. You do not want to have to cast it and have it not jump. If it doesn't jump, it's too mana costly. So it has to jump. So Pestilence is the only one that really works with this. And uh, it works quite well, so, you know, it ain't broke, so don't fix it. Uh, so that's, I think that's the explanation of the skills. I'll try to go into some of the gear here, get a bit more here. So I'm running in a Shira set, if you've seen this. And the reason I've done this is because I don't really see many people doing this. And I mean, I'm sure people have tried this, but I just wanted to take this to the full extreme. I mean, I see people not even equipping stuff on their followers. They leave basic training stuff. It's in blues. They don't. They just let them die because all they're using is a scoundrel, and they just get the three percent crit whether he's alive or dead, and they don't give a crap. So, but I've gone to kind of the other end of that, and I've geared them more or less to the teeth. I've uh, unlocked all of their skills. Uh, you can unlock all their skills, which I find the best for farming and grinding. Or if you've just got a you know particular reason, you, maybe you just want to you know smoke mouth ale and not really die, you can make it so that they can't die. You can throw unity rings on them, on all of them. <laughs> make it so none of them can die, none of them can take damage. Throw unity rings on all of them, and then throw a unity ring. Swap your stone of Jordan out with a unity ring, and uh, you would lose a little bit of elite bonus damage, but you would gain a crap ton of damage absorbed. It would not be out all the time but about half the time, and that's 75% damage absorption 50% of the time. That's pretty damn OP. So, I mean, but still, that's only if you have a tough target that you just don't want to die to, but it's not the best really for damage. You know, if you unlock all their skills, you get all, their fun, all the fun toys that they get, and on all of them. So I get all the stuff from the scoundrel. He does all this stuff. He blinds them. Who cares if he vanishes? He does multi-shot. He's got a Bereza. He's got a 9.9% .9 freeze Bereza with 2% pierce and attack speed. Okay? They don't die. And they don't die because I have proper gear on them. Okay? Everything has vitality on it. Okay? This has a little bit of life on hit, you know? They don't need exceptional stuff. This doesn't have vitality on it, but it, like... <laughs> Really, if you've got vitality on the weapon and on this, you know, even just a smidge of toughness, if you've got legendaries equipped, as long as their toughness isn't ridiculously pathetic, like you've got blues and rares on them, they should not die in the duration that they're out. So he can freeze stuff, pierce stuff, all of his skills, crit damage, or 3% crit, uh, and hysteria. So I get the damage, I get both. And I get that for all of them, for all of them. So this is his stuff, Overwhelming Desire. When he hits stuff with his multi-shot, it has chance to freeze it, and it also has chance to proc the Overwhelming Desire. I've got all the procs and stuff like this. All these procs apply to it. can freeze them. Uh, he can proc a damage add on it. This is just some other stuff. I'm still trying to get some better stuff for him. I'm still fine-tuning some of their stuff. Uh, I, I multi-box, so not all of these guys have exceptional stuff yet. Fairness, I mean... There's other weapons you can go with. I actually personal, personally would recommend a Fulminator with a Rotter Ring, which is what I had on here before. I was doing something else earlier with a friend, and that's why I threw on a Furnace. A Furnace is better if you're if you're grinding like harder stuff, because you know harder stuff can be harder to kill, so it's going to have more health when that proc goes off, likely, and be more useful as stuff that just melts in you know one shot anyways than a six percent of its remaining health. Is gonna be nothing, but uh, we were fighting some tougher stuff, so I threw that on. And uh, Johan of S pulls them all right in. Do, do, do. Uh, and, uh, so yeah, a Fulminator or even a Thunder Fury, and this Warmer Ring for the stun. It has lightning damage, has a 15% chance to stun for whatever seconds. This pulls them in, and it makes them like shockwave on, like on monks. And it's great to put on Templars as well. And of course, you always want to put attack speed on everything that you can. If you can get vitality and attack speed and a main stat, their main stat on everything, perfect. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> All right, because you want them to attack as fast as they possibly can to trigger these procs. 
and to trigger all of the thing, all the procs that they've got going on. So you want to put a tax speed, vitality, so they don't die, and a main stat. To add. I mean, they don't do a lot of damage, but combined together and all their procs, extremely helpful. And of course, all their buffs to you is even more helpful. That's what I find the best because you got your Templar, you got your Chantress, and you got your Scoundrel out. And it's great. You got them all out at the same time. So I rock the Ashira set. And the only other set that is is the Zuni set. And I find this is the best, I mean, as opposed to like an Augil set, because then I'd have to switch the bracers and I don't get the strong arms. And the 35% damage add thing is just too too good to pass up. You can't you can do not want to you don't want to take those off ever. So a Zuni chest and a Zuni offhand with the ring of the girl grandeur gives me a three set, so I've got the mana per kill, which again the funnel, the mana regeneration, 30 mana per kill, <laughs> per kill, and uh, and you get a little extra mana regeneration. So that's probably where my extra mana regeneration came from right there. So I mean, that is the best three set that you can really throw on for this farming spec kind of stuff. Because you're just mowing stuff over by the dozens and hundreds and getting 30 mana per kill helps a lot. You know, mana regeneration or not, it's gonna be instant endless mana. So this works well. You got waiters for poison damage. Uh, Stone of Jordan, poison damage. I mean, that's crit damage on there. Crit chance might have been a little better, but, you know, poison damage. Uh, and strong poison skills, intelligence, vitality, crit chance. Uh, secondary, if you can get like a secondary, like chance to stun, chance to freeze, chance to chill, something useful, you know, other than just experience. And uh, the the damage amplifier from strong arms I'm seeing go up to 30% but it may actually go even higher than that but I've seen it go up to 30% and the best stats for the witch doctor to have on an amulet to give you the most maximum amount of damage that you can output is elemental damage whatever your type so I'm poison poison main damage stat intelligence Crit chance, because you have to have crit chance on your amulet. You can have up to 10 crit chance on your amulet, and not having any crit chance on it means you are instantly nerfed, penalized, 10 crit chance. How do you expect to get up to even close to 50% crit chance if you're missing 10 on your amulet? It is almost impossible. You know, you'd have to spec all of your paragon points and have maximum crit on every other thing that could have crit just to come close to 50%. Okay, so you need to have crit chance on this amulet. Crit damage is going to give you the highest damage after that. Overall. Attack speed is going to be next, or even average damage. Attack speed will be more preferable though because attack speed funnels your regeneration, gets your guys out, and works well with you know your build here, but average damage would likely actually give you a little bit more. If your attack speed is fast, you will burn through your mana faster. So you want fast attack speed, I would recommend, this is actually kind of slow, 1.4, 1.5 to 1.8, I think would be a good range to have your attack speed, so it's not too fast, that you're burning through your mana too fast, and it's not too slow, so your mana, rege or mana regeneration isn't getting up there fast enough, you know, you're not getting through your rotation fast enough, so anywhere from 1.5 to 1.8 I think is a good benchmark to shoot. Um, and of course your damage this sheet damage is always just a, a relative number but your actual damage output is for me I am poison poison damage increased my poison damage is 1.9 million that is the only poison that is the only number that really matters because I'm using poison skills and even I am using haunt which is a cold skill so it'll do its main regular weapon damage but it will have no extra amplifiers to it so this is the actual damage output that I'm doing, 1.9 million. And I've got, you know, extra damage to Locust Swarm, Piranhas, and Acid Cloud. And guess what? Those things are all on my bar. Locust Swarm, Acid Cloud, and Piranhas. It's amazing. I mean, Acid Cloud damage would be the, would be the best. After that, I would suggest Locust Swarm and then Piranhas. You know, and you can get these skills depending on, you can get them on shoulders, um, on offhands, you know, on, uh, 
Yeah, I, wherever you can. Wherever you can squeeze in. A, oh, on chests, you can get skills. You could get it on a helmet, but I would suggest going with intelligence, vitality, and crit. Do not go with cooldown. Cooldown is absolutely not necessary with this build. It is mana reliant, not cooldown reliant at all. I have 10% cooldown, and that is 10% more than I actually need. I, I already made my own mistake. So crit damage, crit chance, and then attack speed. I had a few things changed. I probably should have set this up before I started the video, but that's it. That's it right there. So you don't even need any cooldown reduction at all. And you can just go even there. So there's the damage. There it is. Over 2 million. That, that's right. That's more right. Over 2 million boys of damage. Cooldown, you don't need it. It's a mana build. It's not a cooldown build. Like J build, J builds. That's a cooldown build that relies on mana <laughs> and burns mana quickly because you have to use pestilence to really get the damage output. And I don't like having to rely on both. This relies on mana, but I got that covered. So I think I've explained hopefully most of it. The belt, I find the Harrington, if you're, especially if you're running solo, you grab objects, you double your damage. You can throw in a Hawaj Wrap and get like the snare, you know, with your, your Locust Swarm, but I would take the, the Harrington, double your damage and mow them over. I mean, choose offense over defense in this situation. I think you'd be happy that you did. Um, yeah, and you, if you want to throw a taupe in your helmet, if you can get by with the tough, without the toughness, go for it. I don't need it. I've got it in there anyway, because I didn't really notice a taupe helping me much anyways, but whatever you prefer. And now I'll, quit, I'll shut up and I'll just open a rift here and I'll, I'll show you what it looks like when you get this stuff all going. I mean, you can see probably at the bottom I've got three other guys down there running. And I do this, I have this on all of them. You know, I'm, I'm working this, this on all of them. This works amazing as I know on your own. Or if you have got an entire group full of people that are geared like this, oh yeah. And uh, if you don't believe me, well then I will. You can watch the the multi box video with you know all four of them, and you can see all four of this in action. So I'm just going to start off right now. So I mean, it's I, you can just lead with haunt. You can just start casting haunt. Maybe throw a few spider queens out and stuff like that. A few haunts, a few spider queens, and that'll start just triggering your chain reactions. That'll get your your dudes out, your mimics, and your mimics will cast the exact same spells that you have. So, you know, while you're working through this, I'm just casting Haunt, you know, you can just cast Haunt, and all your other stuff will just keep going off, and your, your dudes, Haunt's enough to kill guys. A little Pestilence, ooh, okay, yeah, they just melt. Uh, show me a leap pack, show me a leap pack. Let's, let's have a reason to actually burn some mana here. Let's, uh... Alright, we're going on through you know, with the wave mutilation. Come on, it's a it's a rift. Where's where's the elite packs? Come on, let's do, 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 do. I mean you can just for trash you can just run through them with just haunt haunt and pestilence really. I mean if you have to stop to cast some locust queens or some little spider queens and fine. <laughs> but, yeah, okay, here we go. We got an elite pack. All right, so there's there's the Johanna Vest. There's that fucking shockwave going off. All right, we hit him with some pestilence. I got some some haunts cycling in here. Some spider queens. This dude's like already dead, and I'm just gonna hold down my acid cloud. This both this dude's fucking dead. I'm still casting acid cloud. I'm still holding this shit down. I am not out of mana yet. I had enough mana. I had enough damage to kill him about five times right there. So, oh yeah, and you can just. You get the regeneration and the resource generation from your Templar. I mean, and if you've got a full party full of guys with the Shearers running around like this, you got four Templars out, and they are all giving you 8% mana regeneration each. Each. For everybody. Yeah. It's awesome. It's awesome. Talk your friends into this, people. Talk your friends into this. Because, I mean, I multi-box this, you know, and it just rick rolls and stomps everything. Like, it's absolutely ridiculous. But, I am one person, and, you know, I have to micro these guys and control them all myself. But, to see a full party of people, like, like, in this build, but controlling it, like, you know, actual people. There's the Hex, the Enchantress Hex, the, the chickens. Yeah, 
yeah, that made this fight extremely easy. Why? Because you guys were chickens. You guys were chickens for three, four seconds, and that was pretty much almost the entire duration of this fight. Yeah. I mean, thanks, Chantress. I mean, shit, if I just had my Templar right, that could have been ugly. I mean, those guys do damage. They spin their little knives and their little flails and shit like that. I mean, you'd have to cast your Horrify if you had it, or even just pop Spirit Walk and just book it on out of there. But, I mean, still, like, those guys, they can hurt. But, I mean, you got an Ashira set on, so... They love that area effect hex. I mean, like, your hex is single target. You know, with your little shame and fetish guy. Like, your hex is your hex is good. Theirs is better. So, I like, I like having them. Yeah, they just pop out right when they're needed. You know? They don't come out any more or less than they are needed. And that is absolutely perfect. You can destroy goblins. You know, like, these guys are all just confused as shit right now. We got some paints. Oh, yeah. We can rain. We can rain. And some crappy pants, no waiters. But this just runs through and mows everything over. Like, I mean, I, I want to get. I wish there was like a dense area where they could just like come at me. I mean, there we go. Yeah, that's it. Come on at me, bro. That's it. Work the rotation. It's like a left click, right click, left click, right click. They get a little close, hit him with four, hit him with, hit him with the locust swarm. You know, keep. Keep hitting that three. Keep getting your acid clad, dude. You know, you don't have to burn through it all right away. You can hold it down and just say, die. Or if they're still coming, if they're just kind of coming, you know, just work it with the rotation. Spam a couple, you know, a couple more haunts, a couple more spider queens. Piranhas comes up, hit him with the wave. A couple more acid clouds, a couple more haunts, a couple more spider queens. And just keep that rotation. You know? Oh, beasts are charging at me. They're, they're hitting me, but they ain't hurting. It's, it's T3 here, so I mean, you don't you don't have to worry too much about survivability. You know, if, they, if you're smart, you should be spirit walking. You know, if he's charging at you, you hit spirit walk, well, they hit nothing. So, I mean, you can just laugh. Haha, you missed. See, you, you, I, I can, I'm pushing these guys back, but if they were coming at me, like coming at me in swarms and stuff like that, you know, I'd be just holding down Acid Cloud, you know, Holding, just letting them run into it, and, and if you know if they just kept on coming and they had a lot of health and they got a little too close, oh well, yeah, like this, you hit him with the pestilence and then boom, travels to the back. Or it's the, really a good thing to even you walk up to him, you open with it, hit him with it first because it's a close range spell, and then back up and start your rotation. You know you can use it like that too. You just walk into a room, it's like oh shit, and then you hit him with the locust swarm, pass your spirit walk, and then you get the fuck out of there. You back up. And a lot of spider queens, and they get the haunt, and they get the die wave, and then ah, moan the fuck over, and it's great. So that is, I guess, the poison. I call it the poison steamroll build. That is the poison steamroll build right there. So th that's that's my video. Okay, I would clear this whole thing, but I've got more videos to make. So I hope you like this video. I hope it helped you, and cool.